All right, today I'm going to show you how to change a seal kit and shaft sleeve on a very small 1510 small bearing frame pump. Uh, of course, the, how we want to start is turn off your power at the panel and lock it out. Make sure the power is off and that no one else can turn it on at all. Second, what you're going to want to do is you want to shut off your service valves and then you can start working. All right, what I do is I take out every other bolt that's in the volute cover plate and then I loosen these slowly and you're going to get leakage down out here, um, whichever, whatever's in your pipe and what's ever in the volute. You can clean it up when you're done. So I slowly go in and just loosen these until pressure starts to release. And then some water starts leaking out the bottom. And then slowly I unscrew them a little bit. Now I've loosened the foot pedal for the bearing assembly and the two bolts up here prior so I can wiggle this back and let it drain while I take off the coupler guard. All right, now I'm going to take the coupler guard off. Now it's a two-piece coupler guard, so it separates. So I'll take the outer part, if you see it here, take this part off first, and we'll leave the stationary part right where it is. All right, now that we've got the outer half loose, I'll pull apart a little bit and lift it straight up. And don't bend it too much because sometimes they fall out of shape on you. We'll set this aside. Then we'll come back in and we'll take off what I call the rigid side of the coupler guard. And again, a little bit of a separation here over the shaft. So we'll open it up as little as possible. We'll set that aside. All right, now we're going to loosen one half of the coupler, not the whole thing. The 1510 is a true back out design, so the only thing you have to do is to undo the set screws on the motor coupler. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So we loosen the coupler half and we pull it back towards the motor bearing and sometimes they're easy and sometimes they're hard. If they're hard, like this one's been, never hit it directly with a hammer or anything metal because you don't want to crease or ding the coupler half. Grab a piece of wood and just give it a tap back until the sleeve drops out between them. All right, now that we've got everything loose, what we're going to do is we're going to take a marker and we're going to mark everything so we know exactly where to put it when we put it back together. And then we'll loosen our nuts and bolts here. All right, now the bearing assembly is ready to pull out. All right, so now we've got everything loose. We should be able to pull it right straight back and out without having to move the motor and upset the alignment. So we'll pull the assembly out and we'll set it off to the side. All right, now that we've got it set aside, we can set it up on the impeller what we want to do is we want to remove these four bolts that hold the bearing assembly to the cover plate. And if you notice, I marked this at the same time as I marked this on the volute.
All right, now that you've got the uh, bolts undone from the bearing assembly to the cover plate, we'll um, loosen the impeller nut. I just use a regular screwdriver and I put it in the vein and put a little pressure back towards the cover plate to kind of pinch it in place. Otherwise the impeller will spin and then just give it a good twist. And the impeller nut comes loose. And I can just reach in and unscrew it. Now what you should have on the end of the bolt is the bolt itself, a lock washer, and an impeller washer. If you're missing any of these parts, you're going to have to get them to repair it properly. All right, now that we've got everything loose and you're ready to pull everything apart, and we'll get the puller and we'll get this closer to us here. Then, John, I'll uh, have you look at this once I get it started. All right, John, if you want to get a close-up on the end of that shaft, if you notice, there's a hole in the end of the shaft where the impeller bolt goes into. And what you want to do is you want to bring your puller in. And there's a little dimple on the end of the shaft that helps you center it. Just insert it in the hole. Put your ears on the cover plate. Don't use the impeller. You don't want to bend it or ding it at all. You might knock it out of balance. And then just pull on it. And just hand tighten it down until it's snug. And then you can let go of the puller and it'll stay there while you grab your wrench and tighten it. And then you can pull everything off at once. All right, now that we're ready to pull everything apart and everything's loose, I'm going to tighten the puller and you're going to see this seam right here start to separate. You're going to use the cover plate to pull the impeller and everything out at the same time. You don't have to worry about the seal because you're changing it anyways. So I'll start tightening the puller and you can watch everything come off at the same time. All right, now as you can see, I've got it as tight as I can get it here. But you can see the seam back here, and if you notice, everything is loose. So I'll loosen the puller and drop it out of my way. And if you run into this problem, a crowbar, a screwdriver, Anything like that will work. And what we'll do is, is we'll lightly tap around here, or even pry. Okay, looks like the impeller's loose enough to pull off. I'll just slide it off. You can toss the spring aside. And then if you notice, Pull this up a little bit to try to balance it, but the cover plate and the seal kit are going to come right with it. On this one, the seal kit's on there quite tight, but it'll pop off. It's a lot easier to use the cover plate than it is to dig around in there. There you go. All right, now that we've got everything apart, we'll take our old seal kit and set it aside. Now if you want to get close on this, John, you'll notice that the cover plate gasket stayed in place. We're going to want to get rid of that. Just peel it off. Clean up this ring, which mine isn't very dirty. And I just wipe it down, make sure there's not any gasket left on it or any debris. And if you notice, the ceramic boot stayed inside the cover plate here. We're going to want to remove that. Just pop it out, throw it away. Okay, and just make sure that this is clean and ready to go for the new ceramic seal with the rubber boot. You don't want any pits or grooves or chips in it. 
because it'll compromise the rubber boot and it'll probably leak on you. On other 1510s, some of the older styles, this flat area in here has a raised edge on the inner part of this cover plate right here. There are ways to get around that with the new boot. If the new boot doesn't fit, what you'll want to do is you'll want to chip that edge so it's smooth, just like this cover plate looks right here. And no, it won't hurt. That way your new seal will drop right in when you put it in place. All right, now that we've got the cover plate out of way, we've got a rubber slinger here. I like to take it off and inspect that at the same time. Just slides right over. Make sure it's still pliable and tight on the shaft, like so. If it's not tight, get a new one. They're relatively cheap. But we'll take that and we'll put it aside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our shaft sleeve. If it's grooved or pitted, you're going to have to change it. This one is obviously brand new, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you how to replace it, but I'm also going to show you how to clean this up and reuse it. So we'll do that right now. Just get yourself a piece of emery cloth. And what you want to do is just put it around the brass sleeve and buff it up. Get some of the gunk that's built up off of that brass sleeve and make it look shiny and new. Then at the same time, what I like to do is I like to hit where the impeller goes over the shaft too in case there's a little debris on there. That might have kept it from coming off easy. Just shine it up. Get it to look halfway decent. All right, now we're done cleaning up the shaft and the shaft sleeve. Now if I was doing just a seal replacement, I would go ahead and start putting this back together, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the shaft sleeve. So we start by removing the impeller key, and they are quite tight. You don't need any fancy tools or anything, but just a screwdriver, and we'll just tap it forward a little bit and get it on the other side of the shaft, like so. Then you can just take your hammer and lightly tap it up and knock it out. And we'll set it aside and we'll reuse it because there's nothing wrong with it. Now that we've got the key out of the way, we're going to get ready and we're going to heat this up and we're going to bang it off. All right, I've just lit my torch. And make sure you have a wet rag ready because it's going to be hot and we'll heat the sleeve up. shut this off and you'll notice a little discoloration in the brass sleeve and the reason why we do this is we want to get the Loctite that's underneath this loose and if you notice it pops right off some are very hard to kick off of here but this one worked quite well too soon. Watch your eyes. All right, now we got to cool the shaft off so we can get to work a little quicker. Just wipe it down, wait a few minutes, and then come back and we'll buff the shaft where the new shaft sleeve is going on. We've got to get it nice and clean 
so the Loctite will stick to the brass sleeve. Quick touch it with your fingers. Still a little warm. You can put a little bit more on or you can let it sit for 5-10 minutes and come back to it. Alright, now that we've got the shaft sleeve off, we're going to get it cleaned up. And now is a good time to inspect it. Make sure there's no bearing noise. Make sure the bearings are smooth. And then also on the 1510, there's a little inspection cavity down here that the shaft travels through and the inside of the bearings are on. You want to make sure that there's no grease on the inside of these bearings. A lot of times you'll get grease that comes through the back of that bearing and it'll start to insulate the bearing. You want to get grease out of there. So you can take your finger and you can just wipe around the cavity and get some out. Or you can take a screwdriver if you've got thick fingers and just clean out around those bearings and get that stuff away from the bearings. If there's grease piling up on the inside of these bearings, it's holding heat and it's going to wear your bearings out faster. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the edge of the table and get my emery cloth and I'm going to come over by John and we're going to clean this shaft up and get the old Loctite off of it and get it buffed up good and then get the new shaft sleeve put on. All right, I'll walk in here and I'll get this position so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'll start where the impeller goes, just in case I dinged where the impeller key goes. We'll get it good and shiny. And then we'll place it. You can see all the Loctite that's still on here. We got to get that off for the new sleeve to go on. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver and just lightly scrape it. You don't want to plug up your emery cloth when you're doing this. See the Loctite here? You got to get that stuff out of there. Otherwise it won't stick. All right. Set the screwdriver down and we'll emery cloth it again. Get it good and clean. All right, we've got it all buffed up and clean. If you notice, I dinged the shaft a little bit, but because I buffed it up with emery cloth, it's not gonna hurt it any because the Loctite will fill all that in. So let's get the shaft sleeve kit out here. We'll take it out of the box, and if you notice, get a little tube of 609 Loctite. We'll take that out of the bag. Throw the bag aside, and you get the new shaft sleeve, and you get instructions for the shaft sleeve, which we don't look at. Now, we want to make sure that the shaft is clean. It's all right. Now we're going to take some emery cloth, and we're going to put it over the finger. We're going to scuff up the inside of the shaft. Just turn it. Scratch it up, get that nice scuff looking brass color on the inside going, <laughs> blow it out, wipe it off, and now we'll put the shaft sleeve on. These little tubes are nice, they give you a little bit much, but it's better to have too much than not enough. So I'll position this so John you can get in here. And now we'll twist the cap off of the Loctite. And we'll put it on the shaft. Now you don't have to work real fast until you get the shaft sleeve on there. Stuff will stay pretty liquid. Move it around, get it in all the spots that you can. And I'm going to grab the shaft sleeve here, John, so get ready. You get one shot at this because it's going to tighten up pretty quick. Have a towel ready because I'm sure it'll drip. And now we'll put the shaft sleeve on. Now rotate it when you put it on because you want that Loctite to get everywhere. Okay, like so. And then I remove it quick and I turn it around and I shove it up tight up against the back of the shaft 
and hold it there and let it sit and carefully wipe off the excess on the back of the shaft and then let it sit and it'll harden for you and it doesn't take long about 15 seconds I'll be able to I could probably put this right back together in fact it's already hardening I can't even spin it so now what I'll do is I'll just clean it up so it's easier for the emery cloth to clean it and we'll let it sit for a little bit and we'll get the slinger back on and we'll start putting the pump back together all right I'm gonna move to the other side and we'll buff the shaft sleeve and we'll get the water slinger put back on and then we can start to put the seal kit and the cover plate and everything back together and get this pump back up and running so now we'll grab the emery cloth and again it's just like before I showed you before the old shaft sleeve versus the new shaft sleeve this is obviously in great shape because it's brand new but you still want to scuff it up a little bit you don't want to leave it to they come kind of tarnished so again just lightly scratch it up get our water slinger for those of you that don't know what the water slinger is for is if the seal busts loose water wants to travel up the shaft and if there's nothing stopping it, it'll go right into this front bearing and flush the grease out you don't want that to happen that's what the slingers for so if it leaks it'll hit the slinger and fling the water outwards and keep it away from that bearing all right, we've got the water slinger in place. We can set this aside for a bit. The shaft sleeve is ready to go. Now we'll get the cover plate back in here. And we've got it all cleaned up. Nothing around the cover plate where the gasket's going to go. The cavity is all cleaned up. So now we're going to put the boot and the white ceramic in, and we're going to put them in at the same time. This is where your liquid soap comes in. We got the seal and liquid soap. You don't have to be uh, shy with it. You can use it liberally. It's going to wash away once the system gets put back in and the water's flowing and everything. So take this around the outer edge. And yes, you can touch these with your fingers. You're not going to hurt them unless your fingers are all full of grease and everything. You'll be just fine. We'll clean it up before we put it back together anyways. I'll set this down in here, wipe my fingers off. Now, the best you can, Johnny, I'll move it a little closer to you so you can see it a little better. Center it the best you can, and the soap is going to help it slide right in, and just push down on it. Make sure the boot's going in nice and smooth, and there's no kinks in the rubber. And just bottom it out. Okay, and we'll let it sit for a second because sometimes these boots will pop forward towards you. And this one's not, so we'll just wipe it out. Get all the excess soap out of there. And just give it one more push. And it looks good. The ceramic will wipe off whatever's on our fingers so it's not going to hurt it any. All right, we've got the seal in place. I'm going to bring the bearing assembly back in. I've got my four bolts to bolt the cover plate to the bearing assembly. Bring the bearing assembly in. And you can put it on however you want, but just remember the mark that you put on the cover plate. We'll go like so. And very carefully, you want to drop the cover plate over the top of the shaft. Try not to hit the boot on the rubber. I'm trying to do this for the camera so it's a little clumsy, but we'll slide it right over the top. Before you do anything else, inspect it that the boot and the sleeve and the ceramic part of the seal are okay, which it looks good. 
So now I'm going to stand it up. And we'll spin the cover plate to where I had it before, the, the dark mark. And we'll hold it in place. And we'll feed our bolts in and tighten it up and get ready to put the carbon side of the seal back on. All right, now I've got all four bolts in place. And I'm going to tighten them up. I like to rotate them. I don't like to go one, two, three, four. I like to go cross. So I just snug them. You don't need to over tighten them. Just a good snug fit. All right, one more thing before I put the carbon part of the seal and I'm going to take the impeller key and I'm just going to quick buff it up just to make sure there's no burrs in it from when I hit it with the screwdriver to drive it off the shaft. All right, and we'll just rotate this around and we'll pick a good side. and be very gentle with your hammer with this. Pound it down flush, and just tap it back into place. And then we'll take the screwdriver, and when you hear the good clunk, you know it's in place. All right, I'm right-handed. So I'm going to quick twist this around, get our soap back out here, get the carbon side of the seal there ready to go. Now I like working on them sideways instead of straight up because sometimes this carbon will fall out and then you don't know if you get it set right or seated in these two little dimples on both sides. So I like to work sideways so I can watch it go all the way on the shaft. So, we'll get this into position. Again, plenty of soap. It's not going to hurt anything. Right around the rim, outer rim of the shaft sleeve, because that's basically where the boot's going to stop, is just about on the edge of this shaft sleeve. And then we'll take some more soap. We'll take the carbon side of the seal. We'll put it on the inside of the rubber boot here. I'll wipe my fingers off. Now we're going to slide it right onto the shaft. Try to get it as, as even as you can and just slide it into place. Push down so it's nice and tight. And mine went in pretty easy. Some can be difficult. This one's pretty easy. We'll wipe off the excess soap. And then what I do is I take my screwdriver and I place it on, John, if you want to get in here, the upper ring of the seal kit. In between the tabs, place it on the rubber and the upper ring and just give it a little tap to seat it. And now we're ready to put the spring back on and the impeller. All right, now that we got the carbon side of the seal on, we're ready for the spring and the impeller, the impeller nut, lock washer, and impeller washer. And we'll bring this in, and what I like to do, again, mine is new, but if yours is old, emery cloth, where it goes on the shaft. Just clean it up. It makes it a lot easier to work with. I even like to use a little bit more soap. It's not going to hurt it any. Just in case it's tough to be put on. Spring onto the impeller. We'll bring it around. Put it over the outer boot on the carbon side of the seal and then line up the key. for it to drop into place like so. All right, it's lined up. Now, squeeze it as hard as you can and push it into place. If it doesn't go all the way down and it stays there, I'll show you what to do. 
Now mine didn't bottom out, but it has stuck tight on the shaft. So what I do is I grab my hammer, and again, a block of wood. Don't hit the impeller with the hammer. If you've got a rubber mallet, that might work a little better. But I go around the eye of the impeller with the wood, Okay, and you hear it get higher pitched, that means it's bottomed out. We'll just make sure. And I'll hold it in case it wants to move. Sometimes when you get them all the way on, they'll pop a little bit off. Impeller nut, lock washer, impeller washer, in that order. We'll insert it. And again, just get it finger tight, just to hold the impeller in place. All right, now that we've got it finger tight, just put the screwdriver in the vein of the impeller. And again, when you tighten this, just snug. You don't have to over tighten it. Before we put it back in, we're going to check the slinger, because I noticed it's up against the cover plate back here. Torch it, John. We're just going to pull it away from the cover plate. It might make a funny noise when you first turn the pump on. It's not going to hurt anything or ruin anything. So we'll just back it into the free zone here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It'll straighten itself out. All right, now we're going to get ready and put this thing back into the volute. Make sure that this uh, cover plate is clean where the gasket goes. Now sometimes they fall off when you go to put them, the gasket falls off when you go to put them back on the volute. So what I like to do, some of the soap you used earlier, and we'll put it right on that inner ring right where the gasket goes. It's not going to hurt anything. Don't need a lot of it, just enough to hold the gasket in place. And we'll slide the gasket over. And it gives you some holding power, so when you put it in place, it most likely won't move on you. All right, we got the gasket in place. We're ready to put it in, just about ready to put it in. What I like to do is I like to loosen the foot mount so it wobbles. I want this to float. I don't want this to be uh, bound up in any way. I like to have it loose when I put it back in because it's one of the last things I'll tighten. So. Again, we'll take it and we'll lift it up. And we'll slide it right into place, carefully. Now keep an eye on your gasket to make sure it stays on that inner ring. Line your marks up. Click it into place. All right, I've got it in place. I'm going to put a couple of bolts in just to hold it in place. And then I can let go of it. Okay, and now I can put the rest of the bolts in and tighten it up. All right, now I'm going to tighten the volute bolts down. Not tight, tight, just snug. And I also rotate across. All right, now they're all tight. Now what we'll do is, before we go any farther, this is where you want to open up slowly your discharge in your suction valve. Just in case the seal leaks, then you don't have to take anything else apart. You've gone as far as you can. So open up your valves and make sure that it's not leaking. If it doesn't leak and everything seems okay, we can continue on. Now what I do here is it's supported. It's in the volute the way it should be. Now I come to the base that I like to loose. And I put the base bolts back in here. All right, the finger tight, so I can still move them. Now that you've drawn the, the support bracket down, now you can finger tighten the top ones, so you don't get a lot of shake sideways on it. So everything is snugged up by your fingers. Now what you want to do is you want to tighten the bottom ones first.
This draws the support bracket into place. And again, snug, not over tight. All right. Now, that's in place. Now we can tighten the upper two. And then we can put the coupler guard and the uh, rubber sleeve back in. All right, now we're going to put the rubber sleeve back in. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this coupler half on the motor side and we're going to squeeze it as tight as we can. And I like to over squeeze it a little bit. You don't have to. If you've got a good grip, you can do it. But I squeeze it together with a channel lock. Then what I do is, is I take my dowel again. And if you notice, John, if you want to get close in here, you want the rubber sleeve to be inside the coupler half. But you don't want it to be tight. So we'll draw it back a little bit so that rubber sleeve sits in there and floats. So I'll take my dowel again and just gently, you just wanted to back it up 16th to an eighth of an inch, like so. And then take your Allen wrench, and go back and tighten this down. Again, not too tight. There's burrs on the ends of these, of these um, screws. Just give it a good twist. All right, now we're ready for the coupler guard. Now would be a good time to recheck your alignment. Uh, it shouldn't have moved at all. That's why they make it back out style. Drop out coupler, don't have to move the motor. Your alignment shouldn't have changed. But now would be a good time to check your alignment. Now we're going to put the coupler guard back on. And if you notice, like I said before, it's two piece. There's kind of a heavy one and a light one. I like to put the heavy one in on first, stationary. And I like to snug it up pretty good. I might even tighten it so it supports that while I'm putting the nuts and bolts on. Because these things can be difficult. So we separate it over the coupler. let it rest there and I grab my nuts and bolts, washers, lock washers, and we'll put it through the back hole. Okay. This is where I hope you're in good shape because you got a lot of reaching and stretching to do. Just get the nut and bolt started, and then you can get your wrenches on it. All right, because this is the one that'll be in fixed position, you're still going to have to align it. But I'm going to put it up about to where I think it's going to go. And I'm going to tighten it in place. Like I said, you'll, you'll probably end up readjusting it. But at least we can get it close to get the other half on and into position. All right, I'm going to put these in. You have just the standard. You got two flat washers, a bolt, a lock washer, and a nut, which will go in the middle of the coupler guard to the rigid part of the support frame right here. And then what B&G does is they give you two flat washers, a fat flat washer, lock washer, and nut. This will go in between the end here it, so it matches the base frame thickness so it doesn't kink. It actually just tightens like so. Let's squeeze it together. And we'll just get it started and finger tight. Flat washer over here. 
lock washer and the nut. Now just finger tight because you're going to have to adjust it this way. Just a tad, but there's finger tight. I like to back it off a little bit so it's still like this. All right, in order, flat washer. This will slip between the two pieces of sheet metal on the coupler guard down here. It acts as a spacer. Then you'll have another flat washer on the other side of the coupler guard. Lock washer, nut. Here we go. Take the bolt, run it through, slip in the spacer. Now you might have to, like I said before, make the adjustment towards the motor. The spacer goes in between the two pieces of sheet metal and then the bolt goes through and holds it in place. Flat washer, lock washer, nut. Again, finger tight. And we'll tighten them down once we get it adjusted. All right, now that they're finger tight, I'm going to make my final adjustments on the coupler guard. You want it spread as far apart as you can get it without touching anything or without it rubbing on the shaft of the bearing assembly, the coupler, or the motor shaft. So eyeball, space back here, finger tight so we can loosen and spread it apart a little bit to where it's almost touching the motor. And then we'll snug everything up and we'll take a final look at it before I tell you to run it. All right, now that it's all tightened on, do a kind of a last minute inspection, make sure it's not touching anything, rubbing on any shafts, the coupler, you can go throw your power and uh, start pumping some water. If it's time for maintenance on your bearing assembly, grease it while it's running. A couple of shots, you'll hear the grease enter the bearing, it'll make a gurgling sound. Perfect time to do it is right now. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go smoke.